Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. Uh, here at ScooterWest.com we carry all the parts to service a Vespa LX or pretty much any Vespa. And if you're looking for a new Vespa, Vespa Motorsports, our dealership name, check us out when you're in San Diego. So here we have a 2006 Vespa LX 150. Very popular model for Vespa. It was sold here in North America from around 2005 all the way till about 2013, 2014. The LXV went on a little bit longer, but from 2006 model years all the way up to 2010, they were carbureted. So a downside of the carburetor is you let it sit for a few months and it's not gonna run right. The upside to it, you can service it pretty easy with just basic tools. So the problem with this scooter, it does not need the full blown carburetor cleaning like I've uh, demonstrated in past videos. You can check out other full carburetor. I think I have a two hour video just on cleaning a Vespa GT200 carburetor. Shows every single step. But this scooter, I know it just needs basically one thing done, the idle jet. Um, either a poke of the idle jet or clean out the idle jet or replace it and I'll go over it. Let me show you what's going on with this scooter. So the battery's been replaced. Obviously a battery, if you don't keep it charged, it's gonna go dead and may not recover. But, you know. So you're like, whoa, the scooter started. Well, the reason it started in idling right now is because when the motor is cold, it's running on the choke circuit. There's an actual separate circuit in the carburetor that bypasses fuel to give the motor extra fuel when it's cold. So I'm gonna allow it to you know, idle for a little bit and you're gonna see what's gonna go on. So it's already starting to falter because the choke is turning off and the scooter's not gonna be idling or it's gonna idle very, very rough. And I see a lot of people, they just go in there and turn the idle speed up. That's not what you wanna do. There's something wrong. You gotta go and fix it. You don't wanna mask the problem. So eh, it's almost gonna stall. Once it comes off the idle jet, it's gonna stall out. But you can see the scooter kinda of shakes a lot. Isn't quite idling all that well. There you go. It's just about gonna stall. But you get the idea? I'm gonna show you what you gotta do when you've left your scooter sitting for typically something like three or six months. I'm talking about Vespa LX or even the ET4, it's pretty much the same steps for any of these carbureted um, four-stroke Vespas. All right, so if you're gonna tackle this job, just some basic tools and parts are necessary to complete the job successfully. Uh, to take the carburetor out and take it apart, a number two Phillips screwdriver and just a smaller flat blade screwdriver. You'll need an eight millimeter combination wrench to loosen up your throttle cable and you'll find that a diagonal set of pliers or cutters, side cutters, uh, is very useful for uh, working with those pesky hose clips that are found on the Vespas. Uh, some of the supplies to complete the cleaning, you'll need just a generic carbon choke cleaner available from any auto parts store. It's also very handy to have a fine piece of stranded wire. You can cut that out of an old lamp or speaker cord and get the filaments of copper, which are safe for cleaning the jets. Uh, also, you may find it handy to have a Q-tip to scrub some of the varnish off the fine components inside the carburetor. As for the parts available from Scooter West, that makes the job much easier. Uh, instead of just cleaning the idle jet, typically I just replace the idle jet, especially with one size larger where it runs better. better. Uh, part number on idle jet is Idle Jet LX38. We always have those in stock. Uh, if you need to make an adjustment to the mixture, the idle mixture on the, the carburetor. You're gonna need this special tool. It looks similar to this as one I have in the shop, but we have one available. Part number is Tool Carb D-01. So Tool Carb D-01. All these uh, part numbers are also in the description, so you see them there. I uh, highly recommend replacing the vacuum lines if you got old vacuum lines that look like this under there. Same with the fuel line. You'd use a different type of fuel line. You can search LX fuel line on our website, scooterwest.com. Uh, but if you're gonna replace the vacuum line, you're gonna need two feet of this very high quality um, vacuum line. It's fuel line-3.5mm-TYG. 
and also recommend using these hose clips the attach and secure the hoses you need two of them hose clip 11 dash or slash 32 so 1130 seconds all right so let's start with the flat blade screwdriver a small one got your carburetor right here and when I already know the scooter kind of revs up but just won't maintain a good idle take off the two hose clamps also check your intake manifold Oftentimes you'll see cracks in this and you'll be rebuilding the carburetor several times and find out it has a leak on the intake manifold. The one way to check for an intake manifold leak is when it's idling rough or poorly, you could spray a small amount of um, carburetor spray cleaner or brake cleaner, something that's flammable pretty much. Sounds like a bad idea, but you'd spray some onto this intake manifold. And if it changes the idle, usually for the better, which enriches the mixture because it's pulling that um, carburetor spray through the crack in the intake manifold. This manifold is still in good shape. I can't, you know, move it around. I don't see any cracks. Went ahead and loosened the two clamps. Uh, this one's a little harder to get off. Sometimes you want to get a, you know, loosen the clamp, of course, and you can get in there and pry that off. Uh, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the fuel line. Uh, they may have the original clip. You might have to cl cut off. This one's got a reusable uh, clip and it's had the fuel line replaced at some point. And the best way to remove a fuel line is always push them off. Don't pull it off because you can actually break this little spigot right here. And I see that quite a bit, but oftentimes you could just push the fuel line right off. And if you can't get it off, time to just replace it. Just use a knife and cut the fuel line off. And I might even do that. That's yeah, going. There we go. Just if you inch it off just by pushing it, it kind of causes the line to expand and push right off the barb on the end. The good thing we know the fuel tap's working, it's not dumping out fuel. Um, now all we're left with is the throttle cable and you take an eight millimeter uh, combo wrench here, open inside and just go ahead and loosen that nut right there. The later LXs have two throttle cables. So one's a push cable, one's a pull cable. Um, the earlier ones are simpler with a single cable. So a little difference that you'll see. Uh, this little vent line is stayed behind. It does connect to this port. And sometimes you'll also have a line connected to this port right next to this automatic choke. So that little port right there, there may, may be a hose, but it's been long disconnected. Uh, those typically cause some problems, you know, if the scooter's uh, overfilled. So oftentimes people disconnect it. It leads to the carbon canister that uh, captures the vapors. Um, next electrical connection, you pull this little guy back and this boot just comes off. You shouldn't have to, and you can push these little tabs and disconnect the connectors. Unlike the first one I just yanked, but uh, watch out. There's going to be fuel that pours out and there you go. You got a carburetor. It is possible to do this job with the, the carburetor partly uh, attached to everything. But in the interest of this video, I'm gonna pull it out and do it on the bench to show you how it's all, all done. One last thing, on these older LXs, you'll see like kind of a greenish blue line and sometimes this kind of yellow line. If your scooter still has this, this line is typically deteriorating. This scooter is still in really good shape. But just in the interest that I know these lines are very old, I mean, fuel lines already been replaced. I'm gonna actually replace these. Uh, often you'll see it crack here, and more frequently it will crack at the fuel tap, which is located you know, where this yellow line leads to. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull this whole line out and replace the lines, and I'll show that as well. So once you get this wide out line all disconnected, we'll go ahead and replace that. You can see it's already starting to deteriorate there and kind of swell. It's a good idea just to get these out of here because oftentimes you go on a ride on a hot day and that's when these lines decide to crack. And if you have the same size hoses, you, you're able to reuse these clips as well. Uh, there's many different ways to clamp the hose. Uh, you could rely on the hose just going over the barbs and being tight, but probably not the best idea. All right, so start by draining the gas out of the carburetor so it doesn't make a big mess as you take it apart. On the bottom of the carburetor is the bowl drain has a flat screw, and if you just tip it, you drain all the gas, or most of the gas, out of the float pole. Uh, obviously, be careful with gas, flammable. Uh, you can pour that back into the tank or burn it elsewhere. Also, keep in mind, if you're 
your fuel tank isn't full of fresh gas, that could also be causing some problems. Um, but let's get right to it. We're gonna go ahead and take the bowl off the carburetor. Uh, held in place with these four Phillips screwdrivers. When I have a solid surface, I like to use these uh, microfiber, or not microfiber, but um, lint-free shop towels. Uh, and when you loosen these screws, you wanna have a good screwdriver and push down really tight, because these are very easy to strip out. And I'm just breaking all four of these screws loose. So once, once you're to that point, you can go ahead and remove all four of these screws. My screwdriver is slightly magnetized. And to get the bowl off, oftentimes it's sticking a little bit. You just give it a little tap and it will pop right off. Uh, if the gasket between the bowl and the carburetor is in poor shape, I'd recommend buying the gasket kit. It still is available as of 2020. You see the inside of the bowl is in pretty clean shape. Use a carburetor and choke cleaner. Just put a small amount in there. You know, you don't need much. You know, obviously when we wear glasses, I feel it kind of splashing in my face. And you can use a Q-tip to kind of clean the bottom of the, um, the bowl, because that's kind of where the residue, there's just a real small amount of it. Um, also make sure the accelerator pump works. And all it does, you can see it shoots the fuel out. Uh, no issues there, so we're not gonna mess with that. Like I said, this is not a severely uh, a dirty carb. It just has a dirty idle jet, which doesn't allow the scooter to idle properly. So you have the choke jet. If the scooter would not even start and idle when it's cold, you're gonna need to clean this pressed in jet, and that does not remove. And it, uh, my in-depth carburetor overhaul video covers how to clean that out. It's pretty difficult to clean sometimes. You got a main jet, if the scooter's not revving out, this jet is likely clogged. Uh, for the idle, which just controls pretty much just the idle, as its, as its name implies, um, take your small, flat screwdriver and loosen the screw. And take care not to touch the float. We know there's no problems with the floats. These key and carburetors, the floats are very reliable. And just drop the idle jet out. And you blow through it and you, you kind of give it a one eye and look through it. And I cannot see light at the end of the tunnel. So there's no light transmitting through this jet. Um, the stock jet that's in these is a 35 idle jet. I typically like to replace them with the 38. It's slightly richer. I find the scooters run a little bit better. If you're at higher elevation, probably just stick to the 35. But I'm taking just thin copper wire and you should be able to push any obstruction, which is gummed up fuel essentially, through the jet. So just like that. And then make sure you, you block your eyes and you use a little straw and you'll see the end of the jet. If it's clear, you can see it spray out. Now obviously compressed air is also helpful. Uh, looks perfectly clean to me, I could see through it. But the better option is just replace it with a brand new jet. And I'm gonna up, upgrade the jet with a 38 idle jet where they send, tend to run a little bit better. Uh, our part number on this is LX idle jet. 38, you can find it in the description or if you just type uh, idle jet on our website, scooterwest.com and pretty much just drop that in. Again, if you had a severely clogged carburetor, you're likely gonna need to clean the passages for the idle jet as well. But I'm pretty certain the only thing clogged on this, this carburetor is gonna be the idle jet. And sometimes why mess around when you just put a new one in there? They're, they're not that expensive, and I know the scooter's gonna run better with a 38 in there anyways. So, all looks good. Um, there's some extra passages in there. We're not gonna deal with that. One other thing I would check, if you look down the carburetor throat and you carefully slide this up, sometimes you'll see a ridge of dirt on that needle that's coming up. See that ridge of dirt? And is what that will cause is a hesitation uh, off idle. So the best way to solve that problem, you know, when they sit for a while is take a Q-tip and put some carburetor cleaner on it. We're not gonna go ahead and take the carburetor all the way apart. I know the camera's probably not gonna get this too well, but carefully raise that needle there. 
and that ridge, you just take the Q-tip and clean the needle all the way around. It does rotate the needle, so you're able to clean it all the way around. And I can already see the ridge is mostly gone. So kind of just go around there, clean the needle, and you're way less likely to have a hesitation off idle. Another reason for hesitation off idle or tip in, so pretty much when you roll on the throttle, is when your accelerator pump's not working. So we got those two things taken care of. Um, just to be safe, extra cautious, you can give it a little cleaning with a carburetor spray underneath, just to make sure it's all clean in there. All that stuff can handle uh, the carburetor spray, but not the diaphragm that's under here. That's very sensitive to fuel. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the float bowl back on. And hold that spring against the idle, or the, the accelerator pump. You kind of got to jog that piece in. There's a little bit of a trick to getting this um, float bowl back in place. And once you got that in place, go ahead and put the four screws in. We're going to replace those vacuum lines, and I'm 95% certain the scooter's going to idle just fine and run perfect. And again, if you're just scrubbing through this video, this is just a real simplified carburetor cleaning. For a carbureted scooter, it's just been sitting for a few months and just is pesky and doesn't want to idle correctly or has a very rough idle. Or maybe you've masked that problem by turning up the idle speed not a good thing because definitely doesn't run all that good when you have the idle speed turned up with a clogged idle jet. So go between all the, the screws. And I got them pretty snug and then you gotta make sure they're pretty tight because if they come loose, you're gonna end up with a fuel leak. So just with the hand driver, I don't use a power driver for this kind of stuff. Just giving them a good wrist motion to tighten them up. Um, should be all good. We're not gonna check it, I'm just gonna bolt it right in and go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace these two deteriorated vacuum lines. You got two of them, I know they're different material, um, but I tend to like to use a smaller diameter, a higher quality, more rubbery kind of Tigon fuel line. Uh, we sell this premium uh, vacuum hose, I think it's just our part number is like fuel line dash 3.5 millimeter. Um, it's very, very flexible and can handle the, um, you know, the, the duty that it's used for. Fuel doesn't really flow through it. Uh, so you have one that you're going to need seven and a half millimeters. You can just match it up to the old line, cut that. And then we'll need another one that's around 13 and a half, uh, not millimeters, inches. So, so pretty much if you're ordering this on our web store, you want to order like two feet of it and that will do the trick. And I remember a little chunk of it broke off, but pretty much just duplicate the same lengths of the original lines. So once, once you have the lines, get that out of the way. Like I said, it looks a little smaller than what the barb is, but that's not a problem because it fits the barb on the intake manifold a lot better, which is pretty small. So pretty much, if you're having any trouble with this, say on a cold day, you could put this in boiling water and the, the the line will get very, very supple. And just pretty much just work it over the barb. You don't necessarily need to go all the way on there, but pretty much covering the barbs on this T. And that's a very, very secure connection. You could technically not put a hose clamp on that. It's never gonna have a problem. I'd recommend putting a hose clamp on the other sides. Um, and same with the other side, just do the same thing. You'd be amazed how much this uh, high quality line will expand over this barb and it will fit the other side much, much better. So, so over the barb right there, and then we'll go ahead and put this line back in. This line goes to the fuel tap, which is approximately located right underneath here. It's the bottom port. Uh, the cool thing is we do have some leftover hose clips and they'll probably work perfect for this application. So we'll go ahead and reattach the vacuum hose to the manifold. I've already connected to the bottom of the fuel tap. I got this little guy called hose clip 1130 seconds is the Scooter West part number. And it's just a nice secure way of uh, holding these hoses onto these barb fittings right here. So you pretty much push it over 
and you know, like I said, good quality fuel line is going to grab onto those barbs very well, but it's always a good idea to have the clip to hold it in place for redundancy. And then the last one goes to that um, vacuum diaphragm that's on the air injection system. And I know they got this off camera, but it's further, it's kind of pretty much right above the intake fan of the carburetor and pretty much get that right on, put the hose clip on, that's already there, it worked fine, so. All right, let's get the carburetor in. So go ahead and put the carburetor back in and it's pretty critical on how you route the electrical cables. I've seen people route them in the incorrect way and they actually end up getting pinched between the idle speed screw and or the pulley and that, you know, all this, this stuff moves when you're um, running the scooter. So first of all, we'll go ahead and hook up the throttle cable because it's got the most slack on it. Pretty much put the barrel into the, the pulley here. If you have the double throttle cables, make sure you don't get the, the push in the cable, pull cables mixed up. Um, get this little guy, make sure you don't, you have some free play in the cable because if it's, if your throttle assembly is holding the idle open, then you're not going to have a very good quality idle. 8 millimeter wrench here. And it's touching the throttle stop. You got your wires and the next one that's kind of a little more difficult is getting the fuel line on. So again, if you got a dirty fuel line, be careful because oftentimes I've seen where an old fuel line might let a flake of an old, uh, junk into the, the needle on the um and start flooding the scooter because there's a, a piece of debris holding over the open the needle and we'll go ahead and just tighten that down have the carburetor approximately uh perfectly upright So here's the two wires and located right here, right where my finger is. Actually, I used a screwdriver to point. There's a little clip right here that holds the wires. A lot of people don't know about that. They just run the wires wild, but you can get the, uh, the wires underneath this clip. And it keeps them out of the way. It was put there or cast there for a reason or in the mold, so. So leave the wires like that. We'll connect those up next. Fuel lines hooked up. Uh, the last one is this line that has like a press fit for your carburetor drain. Can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm just hooking it to that spigot right at the very bottom of the carburetor. So just like such. And next we'll go ahead and push the uh, carburetor intake manifold. Again, if you have any difficulty, go ahead and loosen the hose clamp even further. Even push that out of the side because when you push this open, you'll see that the intake manifold kind of gets a little larger in size as push it on. Make sure that little uh, tooth is engaged in that little rubber bit. If it's not all the way in or in, in the bottom, you're going to have an air leak and this scooter's just not going to run right. And pretty much you don't need to over tighten these where they're really distorting the rubber just enough to clamp the carburetor in place. So there, there it is. It's all in there pretty tight. Pull the slack out of the, uh, the two wires. Can't really mix up the wires because it's pretty much a male and a female connector on this little harness right here. And one's a little longer and reaches the red connector. And the shorter one, which is, um, the carburetor heater. One's a carburetor heater and one's a automatic choke assembly that, or auto buy, buy starter, you know, lets that excess fuel go by. Once you get those in that boot, there's a little clamp built into the frame and it holds those right out of the way. So let's see if I did my job right. It's going to take a bit of cranking initially to get it started, pretty much to get the fuel flowing through the carburetor you know, because we left the carburetor completely bone dry. 
So just leave the throttle closed. You don't need to open it up. And eventually it will start right up. If you open the throttle, sometimes the fuel won't flow as fast. And we're gonna let it warm up and then it should be running pretty good. If you need to make any adjustments to the idle speed, you wanna allow the motor to fully warm up. Typically after taking it on like a five minute, 10 minute test ride, and that's when you wanna adjust your idle speed, not when the motor's cold. And same with the mixture screw. You wanna, if you need to make an adjustment to that, you're gonna need this special D-shaped tool. And if you look in the description of this video, I'll have the part number for that tool. So to set the proper idle after you warmed up the scooter, this is a nice smooth idle. Doesn't sound like the mixture needs to be adjusted. If it was kind of an uneven idle, it may be running too lean or possibly too rich. Uh, this is your idle stop screw, and I'll show you how it works. So if I go counterclockwise, the idle speed keeps on going lower. The motor will still idle, but that is way too low. And you can even hear the motor struggling a little bit. And if you go up, about right there is about the right idle. Uh, the, the RPMs is, is posted on the emission sticker on this, but that doesn't really concern me. It's just a range, like 1,750 RPM, something like that. Um, but you just do it by noise. And where the motor sounds good, now I'll show you an idle speed that's too high. See how it kind of has a hanging idle? That, that is way too high of an idle speed. The other problem is the rear tire will typically be spending. You know, it would be spinning around because the centrifugal clutch is engaged, so. About right there. And you can always check your idle, give it a blip, and then let it drop to the idle stop, and it's coming to a perfect idle every time. So this, this uh, LX runs like a top. It's about as good as it did when it was brand new, so it's good to ship. So if you have an older Vespa LX, whether it's a 50cc, 150cc, or even the older ET4, they all have carburetors in them. And the unfortunate side effect of modern fuel is it tends to gum up the carburetors. So I hope you found that uh, video useful if you're looking to tackle this job on your own. Of course, if you're in San Diego and want the professionals to take care of it, uh, Vespa Motorsport, we're here to help you out. Uh, thanks for watching my video and thanks for subscribing and checking out all the other Vespa related videos that we've published over all the years. I really appreciate all the support that this channel's given our shop. It's made our shop very successful. Uh, one of the largest shops in the nation in North America for parts and accessories sales. We don't monetize this video channel because you help us out by purchasing parts and accessories from ScooterWest.com. This robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com, if you stumble across this for the first time, please subscribe, give this uh, video a thumbs up, obviously helps us out, and thanks again.